I'm an extraordinary farter. Could you bite wind on cue? I, I have done. No. But I have to be prepared. Uh, by what? Eating certain things? Yes. Oh, but that's a good, it's a good, uh, healthy way to be. So Nick was a, a wonderful person to work for. OK, uh, what, what do you look for now in a part? When you're working now and we establish that you're still working, you're working pretty hard and you're, mm -hmm. you're going to be on, well, you're on our TV screens in a series that just started. Mm -hmm. well, what is it that you, you most look for in the part? It just has to capture my heart. You know, you fall in love with it. And if you do, uh, you do it. You know? And this character... You're a very attractive man. Oh. <laughs> I, I think we look a little similar. No. No, you're much no, better looking. You, hold it. What? I'm better yeah. looking. Oh, my God. Yeah, obviously, oh. but... Um, no, no, really? Yeah, absolutely, with a great dress sense. <laughs> <laughs> this is... You've been put up to this by Kapinski, No, I haven't. Haven't. I swear to God. I just thought, coming out here was... I was watching you with the other people, and I thought, it's a bit like Dr. Phil. Yeah. And, um, There's a degree of therapy. I want you yeah. to relax, open up, yeah. tell me about things. Yeah. Uh, you're married. You're a married man now. How many, oh, yeah. years, how many years have you been... This is not your, your first relationship. No, it is my third... My third. first relationship? No, no, we, it's first... <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's, uh, he's about to lose his virginity, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, no. <laughs> uh, I think this is not your first marriage. It's, uh, you, you've been uh, married before. You've had relationships yes. like this before. Uh, this one, how long have you been with, with this wife? And she seems to be genuinely the love of your life, from what I've read about what you've said yes, about it. Yes, yes, because if I had done deliverance or if I had done straw dogs, maybe I wouldn't have met her. So that's a good way of looking at life. Uh, yeah. Everything you do takes you in a certain path. Yeah. Now, how many children do you have all together? All together? Mm. Five. Five children. Yeah. Uh, we've had one of your children on this show before. I'm sure you can guess which one. Rachel. Rachel's twin brother. Kiefer. Kiefer. OK, Kiefer. Uh, a tremendously talented actor. Yeah. Lovely bloke. Uh, you two are close? You were pretty close together? Yes, wonderfully close. I should have told him... Oh, I didn't know. I guess I probably didn't know. We had Easter brunch uh, last Sunday. That would make sense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you enjoy watching him perform? Would you like to act with him, or have you indeed acted with him? I, uh, I was in a film that he was in. But not in scenes with him? No. 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 I mean, uh, I was Joel Schumacher. We made uh, A Time to Kill. And after I was hired, Joel, because of his relationship with Kiefer, um, hired him and didn't say anything to me. And I said, Joel, come on, for Christ's sake. I mean, I had wanted to do a picture with Kiefer. Yeah. And just, you know, just the two of us. And. Uh, so I've got something in my eyes. No. And um, <laughs> uh, so, but we had no connection in the film. And, uh, but I did, I did uh, offer an improvised line. Uh, Kiefer was walking over there, and I was with Matthew McConaughey. And I said to Matthew, um, do you know who that boy's mother is? Uh, but, no, Joe will have the same reaction you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not as good as your spunk joke, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the same league, really. No, I mean, you no. can't do the swimming, no. either. Um, you know, you've worked with some of the greats, some of, the, some of my favourite actors all time, not necessarily all the big names. I mean, some of the... Peter Boyle you worked with yes. in, in the Still, Still Yard, Yard Blues. Blues. Which I love. But Marlon Brando you've worked with more than once. Yes, twice. Uh, that, and that must be quite something. to Because uh, to many of us, I think he's one of the, if not the finest screen actor to come out of the, the American... Cinema. How is he to work? What was that like? Was it was it exciting? Was he uh, as impressive as as we feel he might have been? He's a great reader, uh, and uh, a very observant man. Um, it was interesting. I was in the shower at four o'clock in the morning. We were going to go to Shepperton to shoot, and uh, and I was called, and they told me that we would not be shooting that day because Marlon didn't feel he was ready to do the scene. And I said, well, what else can we do? They said, there's nothing else we can do. And I said, wait a minute, we're not going to shoot because Marlon doesn't feel he's ready? And they said, yes. I said, well, will you speak to Marlon and give him my heartiest congratulations? Because if it were me and I had that kind of power, I would never go to work. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, did, he was very heavy. He said, uh, in confidence, but I think I can... that he hadn't seen his penis for seven years. I thought, what about a mirror or something? <laughs> um, but he was... Uh, I, was call I was... My wife was in Paris, and I was here, and I was calling her to ask her to come over, 
And uh, she wouldn't budge. And uh, Marlon came into my dressing room and sat down. And he said, who are you? I said, my wife. And he said, let me speak to her. And he picked up the phone and uh, started to talk to her in French. And in three hours, she was at Shepperton Studios. Wow. He was the most enchanting man, seductive, extraordinary. Uh, let me ask you about the series that you're on American TV. Now, this is quite a big commitment, I thought, to you, because you've never... Have you been in a, a long-running TV series before, or a show of this Commander-in-Chief for one year. All right, well, so it's mm -hmm. one year, and you, I guess you knew you were going to be in it for a period like that, or...? Yeah, OK, I did. here you're committed. I guess it's pretty open-ended, isn't it, depending on how successful the show is? Well, no, I could die. You could... <laughs> we could all die, Donald. Yes, but um, I have a better chance than you do. <laughs> well, mm. you say that, we haven't seen the way I drive. Um, <laughs> Uh, and so here you're playing uh, the patriarchal figure, the father figure in a family who are, uh, let's face it, not the most stable, not the best balanced. T tell Dysfunctional. us about what's the what's the uh, what's the idea? What's the uh, the meat of the story? It's about a, a very wealthy family, um, billionaires. I think I have thirty-two billion dollars, um, and it's uh, three generations old. My brother was uh, going to be was a senator who was going to be the next, theoretically, the next president of the United States, and he was assassinated, which is an American method of electoral politics. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I had to take over the helm of the family. I have five children and a wife. Uh, my wife, I only discover in the second or third episode, has been unfaithful with my best friend from the... Uh, from when she went from changing from her wedding gown into her honeymoon dress. I mean. Uh, and I am, um, I am, was an extraordinarily faithful. It's the most moral character I've ever played. So I didn't know that because I've seen the first episode and I didn't, you can't quite see how it's going to play out. And I assume because most of the kids are pretty rotten uh, that your character has in this. And I assume maybe the father figure was as well, but not so. No, wonderful. Okay. Uh, let's look, this is a clip, and I think it's relevant to the scene you just described here, because this yeah. is uh, your character confronting who we know now yeah. to be the unfaithful wife. Because she's uh, given birth to a child, not mine. She's what we call a granny. No, that's, that's what she gave birth through. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk. What's that? DNA results. You lied to me. What the hell have you done? I found out what I needed to know. I found out the only way that I could, given the fact that my wife doesn't tell me the truth. So... So you know. I haven't read the results. I won't. I want to hear it from you. Which of our children isn't mine? Which one is Duchess? I'll tell you. But you've got to promise me nothing will change. As far as the children are concerned. I don't have to promise you anything. You took my life. You took my life that I placed in your hands to help me carry it safely to the grave, and you laid it on every bedside table you could find while you pursued whatever it was you were pursuing all those years. I hope it was the obliteration of yourself, because, my God, that's what you've achieved. That's a great scene. Yeah. That's a great scene, isn't it? Do we have any time left? Yeah, yeah. The, um... He, he, says, he says an interesting thing. He says, I placed my life in your hands carry through to so that grave. together we could carry it safely to the grave. If ever there's a statement of love and romance and fidelity and hope and an understanding of the, the parameters, the parentheses of your life, of, uh, of the beginning and the death at the end of it, uh, the writer of this, a fellow named Craig Wright, He's an extraordinary man. 
Uh, the show looks great. I'm really looking forward to getting into it properly. It's on Friday nights here on Channel 4 at 9pm, so you can watch that. Then you can fanny around for half an hour and then watch this show, so it's quite nice. You know? <laughs> hey, how lovely to have you on the show. Um, Thank you. I've waited 21 years to have you back. Uh, you were one of my favourite guests back then. You're still one. I want you back in at least another appearance. 93, I'll be. Yeah, OK, well, let's do that in 21. So it will be the year 2029. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Donald Sutherland. Donald, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Be warm. And thank you. You're rubber, so let's get in. Let's get in. Let's get we got this one. Mr. Donald Sutherland, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Donald. Well, my thanks to all my guests tonight, with Paul Sunday, Trevor and Natasha Kapinski, and Trevor Lee. Pass a special thank you to our tiny serial killer friend from Venice. <laughs> Watch out, Natasha's Paul. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh, next week, we have Doctor Who himself, David Tanner, will be here with his new assistant, Kathleen Tate. Top animal expert, Nigel Marvin, will be bringing something big and scary into the studio. Actor and national treasure, John Hurt, will be with us. And we have live music from one of the biggest bands.